guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm so excited to be making this food because it's one of my favorite countries. And last week I picked India, and India is amazing if you've never cooked Indian food. It's not as hard as it seems, and it's just so good. There's so many different regions in India, and all of them have their own kinds of food, and it's just a very interesting country. So if you want spicy, delicious Indian food, please just keep watching. We're going to get started with all the spices. You're going to want to get a pan hot. And the first spice I'm going to add is this cashmere chilies. Now if you can't find these, you can use regular chili powder. But please, if you're going to make this recipe, just go on Amazon or wherever if you don't live in a town with an Indian grocery store and get the original like right chilies. It makes a difference people. So I need eight of them. Next, we're gonna be putting in the black mustard seeds. And I'm gonna do one and a half teaspoons of this. Now, when you're toasting this stuff, you don't want this to burn. You just want to toast it. Now we have coriander seeds. And we need three tablespoons of this. And this has a lot of spices in it, this whole dish. But that's all right because spice is nice, especially in India. The dad jokes. Now we're going to do cloves. I love the smell of cloves, it reminds me of ham. So you need eight of these. I'll just put a bunch, just count them. There you are. Next we got cinnamon, put two sticks in there. You guys, I'm gonna have to get a whole another spice cabinet just for this recipe. I got four green cardamom, now I got whole black peppercorns. I'm going to throw those in there too. And that was a half a teaspoon of those. Cumin seeds! I love cumin. I use it all the time. Seeds not so much, but this recipe calls for the seeds. So I got one and a half teaspoons of this. Ah, where are you? Got fenugreek seeds now. Same amount, one and a half teaspoons. This is already smelling so good. Get a little stir around. Again, make sure you do not burn these. Just toast them. All my spices are toasted and it smells so amazing in here so good all right i'm going to put all of these little seasonings in this blender here to grind it on up so we can make this paste now i'm going to grind it up To the grinder and that's going to be a whole head of garlic the whole damn head i know it seems like a lot of garlic but you won't regret it and an inch and a half of fresh ginger and of course we're going to cut the skin off of this ginger just kind of like peel it like an apple i like to cut up the ginger a little bit just so it makes it an easier job for the blender to blend it up smoothly move on to the garlic and everybody knows how to peel garlic. You crush it a little, get that paper loosened up, and just get the garlic wrapper off of here. 
I got all my garlic and ginger peeled and sliced. Just throw it right in there. And then I have white distilled vinegar here. If I could get the cap off. And we're gonna do three tablespoons of this. Now we're gonna move on to the tamarind paste. Again, please go on Amazon if you don't have a grocery store in your town where they sell this. So uh, that's what the little pods look like on there. And we're going to do one and a half tablespoons of this. If I could open this. Just they really had that lid on there tight. The tapping trick. It works, honey. So one and a half tablespoons of this stuff. How many teaspoons are in half? What is that? Three? You speak. What is it? <laughs> I don't know where my half tablespoon spoon is. So I'm just going to eyeball it and just try to get half of this. That looks about right. Well, yeah. It's fine. This is a really full guy. Look at how full it is. To the top, tippity top. And now we're making the paste. That little blender really tapped out. So I got the big guy. And we're just going to blend this up in the Vitamix now. If you need to, you can add a little bit of water to make it more paste-like. It is a lot of dry ingredients in here. So I'm just going to turn it back on and just start slowly adding. Ooh. I got my paste. I put it in a little bowl just so you could see the paste-like consistency here. And it smells so amazing. Now I got the chicken. And this chicken has already been washed and seasoned with just salt. And now I'm just gonna put the whole paste, like all of it, on this chicken. And this is a pound and a half of chicken thighs that I'm using. And that is the number, pound and a half. Make sure I get all, every little bit of this paste because it's, oh, I'm, I don't even have words. And make sure you get it everywhere. So you're gonna wanna flip your chickens around. Day two, marinated chicken. And we're gonna leave it out on the counter so it gets like more room temp. And we're gonna start chopping up two medium sized onions here. Do you see these onions? That's what we're doing. So we're just going to dice this up, chop these little butts off, peel the skin. You guys know how to chop onions. You're good. Now we're going to cut up two green chilies here. Just chop their heads off. Look at how long and skinny these are. Now we have three Roma tomatoes and we're just going to do a rough cut on these. Woo! Almost lost a tomato. I'm just going to chop these up just super however it doesn't really matter once you put them in a pot for an hour and stew them down it's not really going to make that big of a difference. I also need tomato paste, turmeric, and Indian bay leaves. They are much different than the average bay leaf that you use in like French cooking. And I got vegetable oil. So we're gonna add two tablespoons about of vegetable oil to the pan. Probably medium, medium high heat. 
So now that my pan's hot, I'm gonna add the onions and peppers. You could already hear the sizzle on this. And I know I say translucent a lot, but these ones, we're not getting them translucent. We're getting them golden. We're getting some golden onions today. Yes. So it's gonna take a little bit longer. Pass translucent onto golden. Do you see the golden? Golden, yes. Pass translucent. I'm gonna stick these onions back in this bowl here. And the smell on this is just beautiful, people. It's just beautiful. All right, and action. So now I'm gonna put the chicken in here. Now, I turned on the temp to about medium. It was at medium high. This smells delightful, you guys. Mm. Onions back in. Like so. Throw in here. We're gonna add the tomatoes in here. We're gonna get all of this sauce in here. Yes, you don't want to leave any of this sauce in this pan because this is all the flavor and all that spice. And we're going to add some water, so we need the spice. That's all in. And now I need about a tablespoon of tomato paste. Off. And I'm going to do a little shake of the turmeric. Get one bay leaf. And now I'm going to add a cup of water. It looks beautiful. Now I'm going to move this around, and if I add if I have to add a little bit more water, I will, but I'm just gonna try to shove all the ingredients down in between the chicken and just spread the love here. All those nice ingredients, the tomato paste, and this is just smelling so good. Jesse, what do you think? Yep, it smells really good. All right, and then we're gonna lid this. Do you think I need more water? No, nah, you should be straight. I'm going to lift this and it's going to go for about an hour. Oh, and you're going to want to turn the heat down to a simmer. You guys, I almost forgot the brown sugar. You can't forget the brown sugar. So there's going to be three teaspoons of brown sugar. Make sure you stir it around. Get it all up in there. Make it live his best life. So, we're at the halfway mark cooking the chicken. Got a half an hour left on the chicken. So I'm gonna soak my basmati rice. I love basmati rice. It's so fluffy. I think it's the easiest one to cook, to be honest. But I'm gonna soak my rice for at least 10 minutes just to get all the starches off of it. It makes it a lot more fluffy. And fluffy rice is the best rice. I'm gonna do a cup. Stick it in a big old bowl. Throw some cold water. Give it a little swirl. And you kind of want to shake the rice around. And you see how cloudy the water is? You're gonna want to dump all that. And do that a couple times before you fill it up almost to the top of the bowl and you just let it sit there with the water for 10 minutes and make sure your water is cold you don't want to do this with hot water you want like ice cold water at the halfway mark you're going to want to take this lid off so the sauce can thicken up a little bit give it a little stir around and dump the water out of the rice bowl and just dump as much as you can without spilling the rice sometimes i just you know ooh, Stick my hand and try to cover it. If you have a little extra in here, fine. 
And then I'm just gonna pour it in my rice maker here. Just get all of this rice in here. And the trick with knowing how much water to put in your rice is double the amount of rice. So one cup of rice, two cups of water. Three fourths cups of rice. One and a half cups of water. One and a half cups of water. And I always add salt to my rice because who likes bland rice? I mean, nobody, nobody likes that. Give it a few dashes. I use the same spoon that I use for the chicken, just give it a little swirl around. And then I also always put a tiny bit of oil. There you go. Good thing about a rice cooker, it tells you when the rice is done. So you don't even have to worry about it. If you're doing this on the stove, good luck. My rice is done. The vindaloo is done. It's all done. And now I'm ready to eat. I'm so excited. Got my fluffy basmati rice here. sauce all right and action marcy wants to pick for dessert you, you don't want to anymore okay i got you i got you boo what's it gonna be oh my god you are gonna be so excited about this one jesse taking it back to homeland hmm.